I usually start off my greetings with howdy or good morning or something. Well, howdy. It hasn't been a good morning. In fact, my morning started at 11.37 last night. Yeah, my, I've been up since before midnight. Already have my grocery shopping done. Got that done at 6 a.m. this morning. Yeah, it has been a long, cold, frigid day. I'll get up to more of that later. But anyway, welcome to Friday the 15th of January, 2021. Yeah. Now what I'm going to be up to today, before I uh, tell you why I was freezing to death this morning that woke me up or last night, and why I have been up arguing with that, uh, what I'm going to do first up is go to town and get the old tires remounted back on the Ford 850 front rims. Uh, even though there's a snag in the rubber right there and a couple of puncture holes, there's one right there, and I think there's another one up here. None of those go clean through the tire. And with all the upcoming things I got to do project-wise before the 29th of May with the uh, upcoming flea market and arts and craft show, we got to cut a few corners here and there. So we're going to reuse these tires, or at least put them back on the tractor for now, and uh, see how it goes. We may end up changing these out for some new tires later in the year or in the next couple of years. We'll just have to see how these work and hold up. Well, today has turned out to be an absolute bust. Um, yeah, I went to three different uh, tire shops. One of them told me that it would be next week before they had the inner tubes because everybody bought that size of inner tube to go tubing with. And I looked at the guy and I said, what snow? Uh, yeah. No snow around here. Yeah, ain't no snow. So I went to another one and they wanted 60 bucks for the pair of inner tubes and another $25 a piece to mount the damn tires and tubes on the wheels. And the third one in Twin Falls, I just plain don't go to either one of its locations after they've augured me over so many times. So I know I can get inner tubes on the internet for 20 bucks or less for the pair. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to mount the tires myself. So, yeah. The uh, tires and tubes are back here at the house again. Well, I guess uh, that'll wrap up today's little deal with the tires. So I'll tell you why I was up at 1137 yesterday evening, which was the start of my day. So... Here's what happened. Welcome back to the dungeon down in the basement of the old farmhouse. Um, as you can see, I've got a little bit of a problem. And let me tell you, the temperatures aren't that cold, but with that breeze blowing yesterday, it was bitter cold in the house at 11.37 last night when I finally woke up because I was freezing to death, even in bed under the covers. So, yeah, we're going to take a look at what's going on here. I don't know if you can see what's going on in there or not all that well. There's some wood right there that I tried burning in that firebox to get the coal right there to burn. Well, guess what? That coal hasn't burned. The firebox is chock full of stuff that isn't doing anything. And, uh, yeah, it's just a real pig of a mess. And the fire is out. Now, in an earlier video, I had made a comment about the very poor quality of coal that we've gotten. And in a minute, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in the coal room. But this stuff, if really good Stoker coal was worth $100 a ton, this stuff might be worth $30 a ton. 
if they could find somebody to sell it. I have never in my life seen coal make ash exactly duplicate of what wood makes. Normally, coal makes small little particles of ash that are gritty, sand-like. Not this stuff. It's just like powder. Yeah, there's this coal is junk. Coal Company did not do me any favors at all this year. So this is going to be the last year that we're going to be running this furnace burning coal. Okay, this is my idea of good-sized stoker coal. Three quarters, half inch, maybe a little bit longer, bigger. Um, yeah, that'll give you a good idea what size I deem as acceptable stoker coal to run in any furnace. This is what I got from the coal company. Little itty bitty stuff. Yeah. And look at the powder. Look at all that little bitty powder stuff. It, it feels waxy almost or greasy. That is coal dust, folks. And that stuff explodes like gasoline. And that's the problem. Is that stuff's getting fed into that firebox. And it's going poof, and it's gone. It's done. It's burned up. No heat value. So the stoker keeps running and feeding more of that stuff in there. And that's what's creating that big old pile or dome of crap in the firebox. I'm going to clean out this firebox. This is what's left of some wood that I tried to get to uh, burn up the coal that's up here on top of... This heap of stuff, look at that, unburnt little bitty particles of coal, and here's this ash. Now that ash may be from wood, I can't guarantee that one way or the other. That might be from some of the wood I burned, that white stuff. But yeah, that coal is not burning, just absolutely not burning. In fact, I think I'm going to do... Let's stir this up real well and kick on the stoker and see if we can't force some air in there. Maybe we can get some of that heat to ignite that stuff that's in there and burn it. But I seriously doubt it. I have never seen such junk. Now coal should produce zinc. Well, I dropped it. Coal should produce this. It's like a glass-like substance, or can look like glass, but it's a bunch of melted material from the coal. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm not getting any of that. I'm getting a white powder. And I swear to you, it looks just like what comes off of a wood fire. Damnedest stuff I've ever seen in my life. While I'm down here with the... Uh arguing with the furnace. I thought I would hit the end of this uh, beam for the cul -de packer one more time. As you can see, this end grain here is just really sucking up that linseed oil. Uh, that'll help uh, preserve it and make it last a little longer. This already has three coats of the oil on it. This will be four fourth coating for the ends. I'm going to do both ends. But yeah, it's basically uh, ready to go. Bolt it together with a drawbar parts and pieces uh, for the tongue and then put it back on the unit and, and I'm done with it and it's ready to go to use out in the field. So yeah, that's the update on the uh, drawbar for the uh, cold packer that we had on a couple of episodes ago. I know this is a little hard to see but this is the uh, fine powder ash I'm getting. Yeah, no grit to it at all. It just feels like talcum powder. Kind of like wood ash. Yeah, that's not right for coal ash. Absolutely wrong. Here's a couple of those cold clinkers. This is what should be coming out of there. Yeah, very few of these. It's not even getting hot enough to uh, 
melt the organic substances in coal into these clinkers. So, yeah, real poor quality coal. If I was an old-time steam engine fireman back in the day, I'd end up losing my job. Because that steam locomotive would never even get up enough steam pressure to blow up the boiler on it. Yeah, that coal is horrid. Well, that'll wrap up uh, this episode from here at Nelson Craig Farms. As always, don't forget, right down there, click on the subscribe button. doesn't cost you anything. means a lot to me. And uh, give a thumbs up, thumbs down, or leave a comment in the comment section, if you would. Before we end this little video, though, let me tell you how to confuse a blonde. Ask her why she has three sisters, but her brother has four. Yeah, that'll do it every time. Catch you all later now. I'm Farmer Dave.